Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and raise our hands. We're going to go ahead and just give God honor. Just give him praise today. Father, we just come to you right now, Father, with our humble hearts and mind, just saying thank you, Father, for you just being God of our lives, Father. We just want to say thank you, Father, because you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway, Father. Allowed us to live to see another day, God. Allowed us, Father, to wake up in this day and hour, Father, just to come and worship you and praise you. So, Father, we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to say that we love you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to say, Father, that we appreciate you, God, in the name of Jesus. Everything that you've done for us, Father, we say thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we can't praise you enough, Father. We can't say thank you enough, Father. So right now, Father, we lift up our mouths, Father. Lift up our hands, Father. Lift up our lips, Father. Lift up our tongue, Father, and say hallelujah, Father, and say thank you, Father. Glory to your name right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you are so worthy, Father, of the praise, Father. You are so worthy, Father, of the honor, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we be so ever careful, Father, just to give you the praise, give you the honor, and give you the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we're just asking right now, God, Father, that your presence is felt right now in this place, Father. Father, we ask that you come down, Father, sit with us, Father. Visit us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, there's so much, so many that is that are needing you right now, Father, just to come visit us tonight, Father. So we're asking, Father, that your presence, Father, your spirit, Father, is coming down in this place, Father, saturating the atmosphere, Father, changing it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we're asking that, Father, your power, Father, is revealed right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we're asking, Father, that your power of healing, Father, is here right now, Father. Your power of deliverance, Father, is here right now, Father. Your power, Father, is being known and made known, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, those that don't know you, Father, Father, we ask asking that you are being revealed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, those that do not understand, Father, we ask asking that your power, Father, is giving understanding, Father, giving wisdom, Father, giving knowledge, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we forever give you the glory forever give you the praise God in the name of Jesus father to speak of the hour father we ask that the word father is being sent father from on high father father that we able to receive it father it is a word in season right now father for us father in the name of Jesus father that that word is changing lives father that word is delivering father that word is healing father in the name of Jesus father that word is breaking strongholds God in the name of Jesus Father, that word, Father, that's coming, Father, we ask that is received right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask right now that your spirit, Father, is on the choir, Father. Your spirit is on the media team, Father. Your spirit is on the musicians, Father, in the name of Jesus. Every person that's here in this house, Father, under the sound of my voice, Father, I'm asking, Father, that you touch them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. You see the need, Father. You see the desires, Father. You see the wants, God, and we ask that you are made known, Father. Manifest right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bind up any, any hindrance, Father, by the blood of Jesus. Anything that's coming against your will, Father, we bind it up, Father, in your son Jesus' name. Father, we say, have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Father, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Praise him. Praise him like you're about to get the answer to your prayer today. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Give him some glory. Build up the atmosphere. The Bible says he inhabits our praises. Let him inhabit you today. Come on. Give it up to him. Hold on. Oh, I'm about to do like my pastor did now. I know y'all watched the Texans game last night. And I know there's a whole lot more noise there. Let's give the Lord a loud praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. We worship you, God. You're worthy to receive praises 
and honor and glory and majesty. It's all yours, God. There's nothing like you, God. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm supposed to be reading the scripture up here today. But it's just hard not to give God glory. Amen. Amen. I've been reading from uh, Philippians, the third chapter. And uh, this is Paul speaking. Amen. And when Paul speaks, I think you got to kind of listen. Amen. He called himself a master builder. Amen. I'm reading from Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14. Amen. Amen. And it says, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. Everybody say one thing. one thing. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the theme is progressive momentum. Paul says he presses. How many of y'all know if an object, because this thing is sitting here and I don't press it, it's not going to move. So I just want to speak to you something you've been hoping for, you've been pressing for tonight. Tonight is the environment for you to go ahead and get that thing moving. So we can move into this progressive momentum that we're talking about tonight. Amen. If you can receive it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Keep clapping for Jesus. Keep clapping for Jesus. I know you can do better than that. Come on. We're going to praise God in here on tonight. We're going to worship on tonight. We're going to Shabbat Barak. We're going to Tehillah on tonight. We're going to give God our highest praise. We can do better. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I know we got the praise team that's going to come. The choir is going to come. But while we're here in this atmosphere, while we're in his presence, we might as well give him a praise. We might as well give him a shout of glory. Somebody say glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Put your hands together and bless him. Put your hands together and praise him. Put your hands together and just thank him real good on tonight. He's been so good on to us. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. If we really, truly, hallelujah, got what we deserve, we'd be in hell right now. We'd be dead right now. But God poured out his grace. He poured out his mercy. He poured out his love. Amen. And we're standing here because of his grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel something in this house on tonight, y'all. I feel God's going to break forth, break through. Amen. Like he said, I am Baal. Hallelujah. Perizim. I am the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. And I welcome his presence. I welcome his spirit. I welcome the anointing. I welcome his power. I welcome his deliverance. I welcome his word. I welcome the prayer in the name. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. If you got your Holy Ghost language, why don't you just lift it up unto him right now? his people and he set aside this time just for us to speak to us amen and to shift us to move us progressively towards a great destiny towards a great plan and the purpose that he has for our lives and as we shift I'm going to just introduce to you the theme for tonight so you can just take your seats and while you're taking your seats just tell your neighbor neighbor tonight is a night of progressive momentum tonight we're moving forward Tonight we're accelerating. Tonight is a night of quantum shift, y'all. 
I said quantum shift, y'all. And I'm going to have to break that down to y'all because when the Holy Ghost dropped it on me this morning, I said, Lord, why you tell me all these big words? I don't even know what this means, but I'm going to look it up, y'all. I'm going to look it up. Webster's, Cambridge, all the dictionaries in the world, that's why they are here to help us. When the Holy Ghost, he'll give you some things and you're like, Lord, what does that mean <laughs> for me? <laughs> I am not a physicist. I am not an astronaut. I have no clue. But here we go. I'm going to read off a few definitions on tonight. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge our pastors, Pastor Kenny and Brenda Rogers. Would you put your hands together for them? We love them. They're amazing. They're wonderful. And it is still Pastors Appreciation Month, y'all. So we want to appreciate them, not just with our voices, but with our Amen. We can sow into their lives. We can give unto them. So we thank God for a pastor. We thank God for our speaker on tonight coming to bless us. Amen. Flowing in, flying in over the highways and byways. Elder Hollis, welcome back to AFFC. We thank God for you, powerful man of God. And we thank God for Pastor Aquila Tyson and Pastor Chris Tyson. Thank you for being with us on tonight. Amen. We bless you. Any other pastors, apostles, deacons, ushers, ministers, Amen. Pulpit guests, <laughs> anyone who's anyone in the body of Christ, that means we're all somebody. So give yourself a hand clap of praise. Amen. Glory to God. But I want to read a few definitions after the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning, quantum shift. I was asking the Lord, you know, Lord, what does this mean to, for us? You know, you gave us a theme, progressive momentum, moving forward. We know it's our year of acceleration that God is doing some things and he's doing it quickly. Amen. He's doing it rapidly. And I looked up quantum, and I found that quantum, uh, it refers to a specific amount of something. Um, it can be used as an adjective to describe a sudden and important change. Now, I looked up the word shift, and it says to change place, position, or direction. Then I looked up acceleration. It says the rate of change of velocity as a function of time. And velocity refers to the measurement of the rate and direction of motion, or simply the speed at which something, is, something moves in a particular direction. And I looked up momentum, y'all, and it says the force that keeps an object moving or keeps an event developing after it has started. And so I looked up when the Lord said quantum shift. He wants to give us a quantum shift because we're dealing tonight with movement. We're dealing tonight with progression. We're dealing tonight with uh, starting and, and accelerating. God says he wants to give us a quantum shift, and he's going to give us an abrupt transition, a sudden or significant change that's going to advance and it's going to increase us. Amen? How many people can use a quantum shift? I'm not just talking about a leap. I'm not just talking about a jump. I'm not talking about going one inch, but God says, I'm going to take you. You can be like Philip. One minute you're here, but in the next minute you're in a whole other city. One minute you think that your assignment is here, but God can translate you all the way to Europe. You don't even know that you were supposed to be in Africa, but God can shift you and quantum shift you all the way across the globe to fulfill an assignment you didn't even know you had. Amen? So God said, according to the definition of velocity, a thing that has motion or speed, uh, what determines, the velocity is what determines how fast we arrive at our destination. And sometimes in life, it's only so, much, so fast we can go on our own. And I'm not the speaker on tonight, but I'm just setting the tone about what, why we're here and why we call this progressive momentum moving forward. But velocity is what sets the, the speed of, of how fast we arrive at the destination. There's sometimes we can only go so fast on our own, and we can only go so far on our own. But we need, we need God to get behind us and to push us forward. We need God to get behind us and quantum shift us for us. There are some things that you're not going to be able to get but by the grace of God. There are some things you're not going to get but if it was not for the Lord who was on my side. There are some things you're not going to get. Um, amen. You can be like Joseph, stuck in a pit. But amen, one day you're sitting in the palace, the second highest ruler in the land. You don't even know how you got there. All you know is God was on my side. Amen. So God said that he's going to work behind the scenes to shift us. He's going to work behind the scenes to take us to our next level, our next dimension, our next assignment, our next place in him but if you believe it on tonight we should give him some praise amen he said i'm going to initiate a quantum shift that will cause you to step into what he has and what he has purpose for our life before the foundation of the world so i'm excited tonight about the word i'm excited tonight amen about what god is going to do in this service and i'm excited about the word that's going to release in the man of god that's going to confirm some things that we have believing god for in our spirit amen anybody believe in god for some things 
Anybody trusting God? I know I'm not the only one. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been standing on the word when it seemed like it wasn't going to come to pass. You're like, God, where are you? But God said, I just need you to trust me. I need you to follow the manual. Amen. He's given us his word. Be obedient to my voice and just stand. He says, stand still and you shall see the salvation of the Lord your God with you. So tonight, I'm, I'm ex super excited about what God is going to do in us, how he's going to confirm his word. And I am, amen, just blessed to be here tonight. At this time, we're going to go before the Lord and praise and worship. So I want you to stand on your feet and begin to just bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise him. Come on, give the Lord another hand clap. He's worthy of praise. God, we glorify you tonight. Yeah, you're worthy. You are worthy of the highest praise. You're the giver of mercy and grace. My Redeemer, I will bless your name for. You are worthy. Lord, you're worthy, say you are worthy of the highest praise. You're the giver of mercy. You're the giver of mercy and grace. My Redeemer. My Redeemer, I will bless your name for. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of the highest praise. You're the giver of mercy. You're the giver of mercy and grace. My Redeemer. Whether you're all the praises, whether you're all the glory. 
your name. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise your name, God. You're worthy of praise. We praise you. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift too high. We lift too high. Hands up, Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Help me say it. Hands up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name. God, we lift your name. Sing that one more time. Hands up, hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift you. God, we lift your name high. Let all the other names fade away. Hallelujah. Let all the other names fade away. Till there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Say, let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Till there's only you. Let all the other names fit. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Till there's only you, Lord. Too high. 
say it. We lift you high. We lift you high. Higher than every situation, God. We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. Exalt his name above the name of Jesus. Let all the other names fade. Till there's only you. Let all the other names fade. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Come on, bless the Lord tonight. We bless him tonight. You're worthy of praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Put your hands together. Give him a hand clap of praise. We can do better than that. Give him a great hand clap of praise. He's worthy. There's no other God like our God. There's no name like the name of Jesus. He's high and lifted up. He's exalted. He is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. The name of Jesus. No name like his name. His name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our God is awesome. Our God is awesome. Our God is wonderful. He's mighty. He's greatly to be praised. And we worship him on tonight. We say, take your place, Jesus. You are Adonai. You are Lord, you are master, and you are God. Amen, amen. Somebody put your hands together for him one more time. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, but I think you might get right back up. Amen. But you can have your seat for just about 2.5 seconds because we're about to transition into some prophetic declarations. And we have two dynamic powerhouse vessels of God who is going to come and release over your life the declarations of the Lord. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord, their spirit and they're alive. And I believe that they're going to release life into our situations. They're going to release faith into our spirits. They're going to sow into us, amen, what God has put in their spirits. So at this time, I want to call for Minister Danita Bloom. And following Miss Danita, we have Pastor Quilla Tyson, who will come and release prophetic declarations into the lives of the people. So at this time, we have Minister Danita Bloom. Put your hands together for her. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I just like to pray in the spirit so I can be aligned with what God wants to say. So I just, those of you who can pray in the spirit, release your language and we'll just pray in the spirit. And we just, I just believe God for the word for this house, a prophetic word for this house. So I just pray. Come on, we're just going to pray. He ko robo jandere roba santere robo korepa setere. Horamba ke ropa shantora. 
Kitoromo shande de robo shande de robo kuraba sande de robo korepa. Kandura bojana oramba kar. Huramba kito roba shente. Kuraba sinde roba atuno roba sha. Keshuna haturaba eturaba te sunara burabaka. He sunara bo she. He roma no shalomba goromba atu atito rombo sere bakar. Keto roba ze, hondo roba, aturo, aturo, etro, horaba, etro, hokara, rambo shaneri, orumba kaniri no lobo sha, he orumba sha, he, 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 Harubo kuraba she, anurubo kuraba she, kuraba zina anurubo she, aturaba she. Oh, 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 ha, oh, ha, 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 reba ka rebo shat. Kio roba ha nurubo she, kio roba she, ho nurubo ho na la bo she. He a robo sine de robo sia. He to robo shene de robo corre pa site. Ona na bo shande. Kuta ne de robo shande. He no robo haro. O shande. O kanda bo shande. Ha o da ja guram ba se. O tandi de robo kande de robo shatar. Jon robo kande haol. O shane. I am the Lord. I will do what I said I will do. Trust my word. Believe my prophets. You will see my glory. You will see my manifestation. But you must speak my word. You must speak the word totally. Believe my word. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. I will perform my word. Many of you have cried out to me. Many of you have said, God, where are you? I'm in the same place I was when Jesus came. I am the Lord. I will not lie. I will confirm my word with signs following. But there is something you must do. You must put the word in your mouth at all times. When you see sickness, when you see depression, when you see people who are not aligned with my word and with my will, you must speak the word over them. You must speak the word continually, and I will perform my word. Don't be disturbed by those spirits of depression. Don't be disturbed by those spirits that will try to hinder my movement, for nothing shall stop me. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of God. I will perform my word. I will do my word, but you must do your part. Your part is to believe my word. Your part is to speak my word. Your your part is to trust my word. Your part must be done and you will see my glory in full manifestation. I will do it, says the Lord. I will do it. I will bring my word to pass. I will confirm words. I will confirm the signs. You must believe me. You must trust me. You must obey me. I am not a man that I should lie. I will perform my word. Thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you not perceived that I am the Lord thy God? I will do a new thing, says the Lord God, in this season. In this season, says the Lord. Now, what I want you all to do is declare this with me because anytime you make a prophetic declaration, you ought to be declaring it out of your mouth as well because whatever you say is what's going to happen in your life. Do I have any witnesses in the house tonight? I need some faith in the house if I can get everybody on your feet. Come on, I think I'm in the house of faith tonight. Am I right? I want you to declare this with me like it's already done. Amen? Because in the realm of the spirit, it's already done. God is not waiting for you. It's already done. Listen, he only started because he was already finished. 
I'm going to come on this side where I think I have some faith. I said God only started because he was finished. And the only thing he needed was for you to carry out the assignment. But the assignment is already done. That building is already done. I, I said that building is already done. He just needs somebody that can have faith enough, that's big enough to believe that it's already done. Now I want you to declare it with me. I want you to open up your mouth and say, I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I am the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed to be a blessing. 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 My enemies are in my footstool. I said my enemies are my footstool, says the Lord God. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I want you to say, thy kingdom come. Oh, hold on. Do you know what you're saying when you're declaring that? He said, thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Do you understand what you just declared? Hallelujah. You just declared for another government to enter this room. Listen, that means you cannot leave here the same way. Healing must leave. I said healing must leave. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am healed. I am delivered. I am free. I walk in wholeness. I walk in prosperity. Wealth is coming in my kingdom. There is no lack. There is no fear. There is no doubt. There is no trouble. There is no lack. I'm going in to the top. I'm ordained for the top. And the bottom just won't do. I want you to give God a shout of praise. Now listen. When we saw that declaration, it said that it was supposed to be a quantum leap. Uh, you got to move out your seat. Wait a minute. They said I could have a few minutes. And now I want a quantum leap. A quantum leap means you not go, you go from here to there in 0.2 seconds because it's already done. I don't have any faith in the house, Dad. I don't have any faith in the house. I said it's already done. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Then I want you to shout. I want you to move out of your seat because you know that it's already done. Can I give some already done music? Hallelujah. I said I want you to shout like it's already done. This is a quantum leap. This is a prayer extravaganza. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. That would do if I was at my house. But we're in the king of kings. The king is in our midst. And he's ready to do it if you're ready for him to do it. Now I want you to move out of your seat. And I want you to give God a crazy shout of praise. Because it's already done.
God comes. It's not a pull. Because we want the anointing just to flow. Amen. I want you to give God another hand clap of praise that it's already done. Woo! Hallelujah! Come on, come on, hallelujah! I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. Help me say, I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. Say it again, say, I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody bless his name. He is a king of glory. He is a king of glory. He's strong and mighty in battle. No one like our God. Would you just lift your hand and give him a wave offering on tonight? Let him know you love him on tonight. We love you, Jesus. You're worthy. There's no one like you, Lord. No one like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go a little bit higher as our praise team comes at this time. We thank you, Lord.
My goodness. My goodness. He makes all things new. Old things, ugly stuff, the stuff you threw away, the stuff you don't want no more. God can make it new. My goodness, my goodness. We thank God for our, what our eyes, what our ears, and what our emotions have taken in thus far. Amen? Amen? Yes. Well, I get the distinct privilege of standing here before you to introduce our speaker. Amen? They have a bio here <laughs> that says lots of wonderful things about a great man of God. Uh, but I want to stand in a different office than what the bio says. So I stand in the office of the adjutant or the armor bearer for our speaker on the evening, and I get to try and make sure that as a man of God, he has the things that he needs and the things that uh, are necessary for him to be a blessing unto us on this evening. But that's not the office that I want to come from to introduce the man of God on this evening because I have a unique privilege with this speaker. And that privilege is I happen to be able to be called friend. God said in his word many things. He called them disciples. He called them evangelists and ministers and prophets. But I remember where he said, friend. Friend. For God, the wise God, the one who is going to quantum leap us, to call you and me friend. We shouldn't take that for granted. When somebody calls you their friend. Elder David Hollis is the eldest of three, so he has siblings. <laughs> he attends Logan Park Assembly of Christ in Gary, Indiana. You still there, right? <laughs> I thought so. He works diligently in the ministry. Suffragan Bishop George Stearns is the pastor there, but Elder Hollis has spoken all over the world. He has delivered the word of God richly and greatly, and I tell you, tonight is your night to hear from God, to hear from a man of God who has honor, who has distinction, who has greatness upon him, but most of all, he is a friend of God. He is a friend of God. He's a praying man. He's a good man. And I picked him up today. <laughs> and I texted him when he landed. And I said, hey, cuz. Your Houston cousin is here. And... Uh, he said, on my way. <laughs> and he got in the car, and uh, I looked at him, and I said, please tell me you're hungry, because <laughs> I haven't eaten all day. And he's just that kind of friend, and I'm going to tell on us very momentarily, but he's that kind of friend. Now, you would think, great man of God, been all over the world, has sat with kings and queens, literally, heads of state dignitaries, right? Done all kinds of great things. I said, let's grab a bite. Where are we going? He said, Chipotle sounds good. <laughs> so we grabbed some Chipotle. But I say that in gist, but I also say it in kind to say he's down to earth and he's a real person with a real word of God for us on this evening. So if you would, please, stand to your feet, even now, and let's give him a great big welcome from Anointed Faith Family Church to our friend and our brother, none other than Elder David Hollis. In time, 
times like these, we need a Savior. And in times like these, we need an anger. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He is the one. God bless you all. You may be seated. We count it an honor of God that God would allow us to be gathered together. Who could imagine that you would be in church on a Friday night? From the life he delivered you from? On a good Friday night. It's one thing when you have to go somewhere and it's raining, so you just chose a place to be inside. But I hear the storms have passed over, and you're in church on a good Friday. Good Friday night. It speaks to the desire that he had to place in you for him. Isn't it amazing that you couldn't come to him unless he drew you? When you got here, he allowed his word to be preached to you. He had to unstop your spiritual deaf ear so you could hear what the Spirit was saying to you. It was him that took out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. It was him that made you ask for his Spirit. It was him that then filled you with the Spirit that you asked for because he put it in your heart to ask for it. Then it was through his unction that you spoke in other tongues. Then, on a daily basis, he puts in you the desire to pray. He then makes intercession while you pray. Then he turns around and answers the prayer that he interceded for you to pray. What you doing tired? You ain't done nothing. He then answers the prayer, then sends the answer back to you. And you got the nerve to but nobody knows the trouble I see. You haven't done anything. He did it all. That's why we start writing songs. Christ did it all. He did it all. Years ago, I was sitting in a university in Michigan and the presence of the Lord was so thick we were there to see the rafters filled with college students and while God was moving in the house I literally just walked over to the organ and I leaned on the organ Leslie and though God is invisible yet you can see the reaction of his power and while God was moving I was just sitting there watching people who had never experienced the power of God. Some of them never gone to church, wasn't raised in a church family. But when the presence of the Lord hit, to see tears, to see complexion change, to see shaking, to see people smiling who had never smiled in a while. And I started saying to myself, no better place to be than in his presence. No better place to be than in his presence. That's where I dwell. That's where I live. That's where I'll be throughout eternity. No better place to be 
than in his presence. And I feel that moment right now. I just, I just, yeah, uh, j j just, just repeat after me. Um, everybody say, no better place to be. No better place to be. No better place to be. No than in his presence. Everybody say, No better place to be. No better place to be. No better place to be than in his presence. I told God, that's where I'll dwell. That's where I'll live. That's where I'll be. Throughout eternity. Everybody say, no better place to be. No better place to be. No better place to be. Than in his presence. That's where I'll dwell. That's where I'll dwell. That's where I'll live. That's where I'll be. Throughout eternity. No better place to be. No better place to be. No better place to be than in his presence. Just ease your hands up in his presence. That's where you'll dwell. That's where you live. That's where you're going to be throughout eternity in his presence. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Do me a favor. Those same hands that you elevated, now give God the best hand applause you've given him all night. My God, my God, oh, how we love him, oh, how we worship him, for his name alone is worthy of praise. We're thankful to the Lord that the Lord has allowed us the privilege. I don't take it for granted. It is a privilege. You can't come to him unless he draws you. Don't you take it for granted because your mama, your mama took you to church or your, your granddaddy was a deacon. Do you know how many church people, church connected folk, church affiliated folk don't have a mind to go to church anymore? And for you, for him to put it in your heart, some of you, you got up this morning 
on your way to work with an intention to be in the house of God tonight. Some of you got your clothes for ready for church this morning as a second set of clothes because you had to go somewhere else, but you were making it your business. You threw them shoes in the trunk. Put them other clothes, hung them up in the back. You did all of those preventive things to keep your garments safe and neat because you knew after a busy day, after putting on a work uniform, after going to the gym, after having your gym clothes sweaty, you had somewhere else in mind. It was called the house of God. I want to thank God that he granted me the opportunity to land safely. When I landed, Brother Glenn asked me, he said, I know your flight was good because you landed. I said, yes, sir. Any flight that lands is a good flight. We learn to give God thanks. And I'm thankful to the Lord. And I want you to help me honor leadership, not simply because it is Clergy Appreciation Month, but I want you to salute them because of their yes. You'd be surprised. Their yes to God is blessing you. Their sacrifice is beneficial to you. I want you to applaud and give God praise for Pastor Rogers for their yes. Thank you for your yes. Your yes is blessing us. We appreciate them. They serve the house of God and they serve the people of God. And I'm thankful to the Lord. Um, you, you'd, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Um, some people think that the enemy doesn't fight the pastor. Some people think, oh, no, no, he, the devil gives him a break. The devil gives her a break. Don't you realize the enemy understands head first. Head first. Anything that you do, it was a thought before it became an action. I don't care what you do. It was a thought before it became an action. Even the stuff you say slip. Oops, no, it was a thought first. You might not have thought long enough, but it was a thought first. It was a thought first. And I want to give God thanks that their actions is because of the thoughts of God that he's placed in them. It's called the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ that has been given to them because they said, yes, we are benefactors. We're recipients. To the entire Anointed Faith Family Church, I want to salute. I want to give God praise for the leaders um, of this uh, prayer extravaganza. We salute you and we appreciate God for you all. Love you all for the things that you do, for the time that you do it. Your time, your labor is not in vain. And um, I was listening to Minister Francis and uh, the opportunity that she began to identify on um, definitions. When I first got saved, I knew God based off of letter. I knew what the Bible said. Matter of fact, that's how I got saved because the Bible told me I could be. I had to believe on him as the scriptures have said. Somebody had, for you to get saved, somebody had to preach to you and you had to believe what they were saying. You, you have never, never, none of you have never met Jesus Christ in the flesh none of you none of you I don't care how deep you are you have never you have 
never met Nicodemus. You never met Peter, Paul, James, or John. You're reading books that were written about them. Now, your study is so intensive that you feel like you know them. But you never met them. But somebody was preaching to you based off of what was written about them. The preacher preaches based off of what is written about Jesus. Jesus didn't write it. But when you had faith to believe what the preacher was saying about Jesus, it initiated in you a relationship that was simply based off of word knowledge. But the more you keep walking with the Lord, you embrace then another level of knowledge. It's called understanding. Anybody that quotes Bible quotes wisdom. His word is wisdom. When you quote scripture, you are quoting wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. But please don't stop at a quote. Because if all you have is wisdom, you're not going to go very far. Because wisdom alone without understanding doesn't cause you to progress. So I appreciate people who start and initiate us having knowledge. The Lord said it this way, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, some people will take that scripture and say, see, see, ain't no knowledge in the land. Keep reading. The Lord said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. God said, I sent my prophet. God said, I sent the priest. God said, I gave the law. God said, Moses spoke to you. So don't, don't trip, don't play. Don't act like God didn't do his part. It's not that it's not knowledge in the land. I've heard people say that. See, see, God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There ain't no knowledge. No, no, no. That would work well for the world. But God is the well-breasted one. He supplies. There is no lack in his house. Cool, shama. There's no lack in his house. Don't, you, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, I got everything I need, then say, ain't no knowledge. Mm, don't go together. They don't walk hand in hand. God has supplied everything. Ye are complete in him. Everything that pertaineth to life and godliness, he has given it. Then, why are the people destroyed for lack of knowledge? The lack is not because the amount is not in the house. The lack is they will not retain. They would not accept the knowledge that God gives. They prefer to walk in their own wisdom. They prefer to walk in the wisdom of men instead of the revelation and understanding of the word of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Quotations is what we did when we were in Bible Bowl. Bible Bowl, Bible Academy, Junior Sunday School, Christian Ed, uh, we had to quote verses. That's, that's wisdom. Those are quotations. But you go on from quotations into understanding where you not just quote the word, you now become living epistles. I wonder, according to the scripture, ye are living epistles read and seen amongst men. There are people who will never pick up a Bible, but their lives in the end will be judged based off of the way they read your life. You became a light and you became a book of the Bible to them. 
Now, I wonder how much will God let some people get away with because you tore out a few chapters. Because though they never picked up a Bible, they were watching your life and chapters 8, 9, and 10 you didn't live by. You know, the, the, stuff, the stuff you said didn't matter. That's why I'm cautious. I don't pick up everybody's book. I don't read everybody's book. One of the reasons is because I want to know what do you know about it. Somebody said to me not too long ago, they said, um, 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 so-and-so said to tell you hello. And I said, oh, tell them hi. And they said, they said they know you. And I said, now, what's their name again? And they gave me the name again, and I said, I, I don't think I know them. I said, but make sure you tell them I said hello. <laughs> and they came back a few days later, and they said, well, I went to them because they were speaking so emphatic that they knew you. And I, I, it just bothered me that, that when, I went to, that when I came to you, you act like you didn't know them. So I went back to them and I said, Do you, are you sure you know? And they said, well, well you know, we, we kind of we lived in the same area. <laughs> and they said, oh, you should have said you knew of him. You didn't know him. There's a lot of people talking about they know Jesus. They did better saying, I know of Jesus than saying, I know Jesus. I want to salute and I give God thanks. Literally just met them tonight, but I appreciate God uh, for their acquaintance. Give God praise for the Tysons. We salute them in the name of Jesus Christ. Carla, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I was literally in the service and I was looking up and I saw my brother. I looked up, I said, is that Pierre? That is my brother, Pierre. I'm thankful to God, uh, worshiping now here in Texas. Uh, we are literally Indiana family and thankful to God. I was, I was teasing him because when he lived in Indiana, his pastor uh, his family, actually, he's not just his pastor, but literally his family, um, is Tyson. And so I said, I said, Pierre, come here. And he came down, and I said, hey, I want you to meet these people. And he walked up to it, and I said, this is Pastor Tyson. And he looked up. And, and, and it's, it's good to be able to associate names, um, and not only names, but good names. The Bible says it's better to have a good name than to have money. That's hard for some of y'all to understand. The Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Why? Because you can be broke, but if you got a good name, if you got a good name, you can get money. But you can have money and nobody want to work with you because your name is shot. Let's go to the word of the Lord. It's in, if you oh, know, I was, I, I was going to say, let's go to Exodus. Exodus, let's do Exodus. Oh, yes, God, I love him today. I bless him. Exodus chapter number 30. I begin reading at verse number 19. Hmm, let's just start at 17. Let's keep the thought. Brother Johnson, thank you for that intro. It's good to be called a friend of God. Exodus chapter 30, verse number 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass 
and his foot also of brass to wash withal. Thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. And when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him, and to his seed throughout their generations. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generation. Thou shalt make a lava of brass and his foot of brass to wash withal. Thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. For a few moments, out of the word of the Lord, I'd like to minister to you from a simple subject, sanctified to serve. Tell somebody around you, I am sanctified to serve. Tell somebody else, say, I am sanctified to serve. They said three is a charm, so make this one charming. Say, I am sanctified to serve. Father, we've just read the Holy Scriptures. Now open our understanding. Tonight, let the light of the glorious gospel shine in somebody's heart. Tonight, while the preacher is preaching, Feel somebody with the Holy Ghost. Tonight, while the preacher is preaching, heal somebody. Tonight, while the preacher is preaching, I pray that you would send answers to somebody's questions. Tonight, while the preacher is preaching, that faith be ignited through the word of God. When we go down from this place, when we walk out to the parking lot, let us be able to testify. I'm glad I went to church Friday night. Anoint me afresh. Let me see like a seer and speak as an oracle of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. The word of the Lord out of which we minister tonight is a book known to us as Exodus. By definition, it literally means to come out. It is a way out. It is not simply getting out. Mm, many of us, our prayers have to do a lot with out. Coming out, getting out. What's the way out? Many times in our prayer time, we're telling God stuff as if he doesn't know. We start marking time, how long we've been in this. Lord, I've been in this six months. Lord, this has been going on for two years. Lord, I've been in this bad relationship. Lord, 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 how long, Lord? Oh, Lord, how long? How long, oh, Lord, how long? 
as if he's not the God of all flesh. The goal of God is never just to get you out. If God gets you out and he has no place to take you to, then you align with what Moses said the Egyptians would say. God said, I'll wipe them out. God said, these ten times they provoked me. God said, Moses, I'll take you and start a whole other nation with your family. Now, the average leader would have said, oh, you're going to get them, but you're going to spare me? <laughs> me and mine coming through? Well, have your way, Lord, you know, have your way. <laughs> Your, your will, not mine. <laughs> Moses stands in the gap and says, God, if you kill them, kill me. When you start talking like that, you better make sure you got relationship and your friend. He says, God, because if you get us out without taking us a place into, they'll say that though you were strong enough to take us out, you were not strong enough to take us in. The goal of God is never just to get you out. If you come out, you're going into something else. Remember, we go from strength to strength. We go from faith to faith. We go from glory to to glory. It's not enough for God just to get you out. That's why we wrote songs, yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Looking ever to Jesus, Jesus will carry you through. You have to learn that if I come out of this it's because he's prepared some other place for me to go into. One, two, three, four, five. I count five doorways with an exit sign over them. Technically, there are six doorways here, but five of them have an exit sign. One, two, three, four, five. What is an exit out of this room is an entrance into another way. If there were a catastrophe, if there were a tragedy, if there uh, was a bad experience in this room and you had to exit, it is only an exit until you cross the threshold. At that point, what was an exit out of one experience becomes an entrance into a new experience. So all y'all talking about, I need to get out. Check to see what is the entrance into the next room. Sometimes safety says, stay where you are. Here, when I look at the book of Exodus, it is a book that God confirms promise. God made a promise to a man by the name of Abram. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. God says, your seed is going to go down into Egypt, 70 and 5 souls, but they're going to come out a mighty nation 430 years later. God says, I'm going to get them out. Generation after generation dies, but God is keeping count. God raises up a man. My God. God is still keeping count, and yet, the answer of what he promised is raised in the situation. Moses, now we know that to be technically his second name. We really don't know his first name. We know that to be his second name. You said, David, how do you get? Remember his mother, the Bible says she hid him for 90 days, three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she made an ark. She pitched it. Uh, we would say insulates it. Uh, she puts it in the bulrush. She puts it in the river. Uh, the Bible says she puts a lid over it. Well, if he is 90 days old, he is three months. According to the Hebrew custom, eight days. Eight 
days of, uh, after the birth of a male Hebrew, he was to be cut. He was to be circumcised. Usually it is at that point that they also named the child. Usually at circumcision is where your name, you were officially named and you were cut into covenant. You were cut into promise and you were given a name. You had been watched. Uh, most of the time they would watch you. Uh, sometimes your name was based off of a uh, pre previous family member's name or it was a characteristic about you. Remember Esau. Esau is the red hairy one. He is named after uh, the character. He's, he's got red. He comes out with red hair. He's the red hairy one. Um, 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 Adam, 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 Adam. Even God names him. It it doesn't just simply mean man or mankind. Uh, it doesn't just simply mean a, of the earth. Adam actually means of the red earth. Uh, uh, just biblical students, I dare you to trace the term red throughout the scripture. There's a red theme that just follows throughout the scripture. <laughs> you'd be fascinated. There's a harlot who throws a red cord out the window. Eh, you'd be surprised. Esau, Esau was the red, hairy one. There's a red. If you could put the entire Bible in black and white and only could use one color, there would be a woven red theme that goes throughout the scripture. Even all the way to the cross. At the foot of the cross, there's a pool of red blood. Lord, have mercy. Eh, I'll get back into the text. Well, here, now we see that uh, Moses, Moses is named again, we believe, the second time uh, by a woman who names him after the experience. The Bible says she saw the basket, she sends a servant to fetch the basket. When they take the lid off of the basket, the baby cries. I like the scripture and I like, I like the way uh, God, uh, his timing is so perfect. God did not let the baby cry as long as the baby was in the basket. When the baby's lid, when the lid of the basket is taken off of the basket, God lets the baby cry. The cry not only goes into the ear of the woman, but it reaches the heart of the woman. Because she could have sank the baby with the basket. Because it was her father that gave the decree that every male Hebrew child two years and under should be drowned in the river. She names him Moses because it means to be lifted up or to be drawn out. Moses, to be lifted or to be drawn out. Moses, to be lifted up and drawn out. It is this guy that will spend 40 years in the palace knowing that God has calling on his life. It's not enough. It's not enough to know God wants to use you. Because just the knowledge that God wants to use you without direction, you will kill yourself or somebody else. Just to know that the hand of God is on you. Some people say, well, I know God called me. Ain't nobody going to tell me God ain't called me. You ain't going to tell me I ain't gifted. You ain't going to tell. Ooh, you setting yourself up to kill either yourself or somebody else. You're going to make shipwreck. You're going to cause some destruction that might take you half or even uh, one third of your life to correct. Moses was 40 when he leaves Egypt. He'll spend another 40 years in Midian. And at 80 years old, God tells him, go back to Egypt. Moses says, God, do you realize there's a bounty on my head? God, I killed a police officer. God, I killed somebody in authority. God, I killed an Egyptian soldier. And there is a bounty on my head. God says, Moses, for the last 40 years you've been running. The only way you can stop running is that you confront. You must confront what you've been haunted by. And the day you confront it, it can no longer bring terror to you. And while you're worried about them, Moses, don't worry. I already killed the ones that were trying to kill you. So you're not even going back to confront people. You're going back to confront a situation. The Bible says at 80 years old, Moses goes back. Scripture says, God says, Moses, you will go to Pharaoh and you will tell him. Uh, when you read Exodus chapter number 4, God does more than just say, let my people go. God says, Tell Pharaoh, let my son go. 
God says, tell Pharaoh, let my son go. And if he does not let my son go, tell him I'm going to kill his son, even his firstborn. Scripture says, God says, Moses, tell the saints. Tonight, get a lamb. Gut the lamb. God says, roast the lamb. Mm, some of y'all, some of y'all have been dead right there. I don't want mine roasted. I want mine smothered. I don't want mine smothered. I want mine fried. God said, roast the lamb. God said, roast the lamb with the head and the legs on it. God said, roast it. God says, and eat all of it. Eat all of it. God says, if they're two small families, have the small families to come together so that they can eat all of it. And God says, after everybody is full, if there's any meat left over, burn it up. God says, leave no leftovers. God, we can't throw this meat away. There's children in Africa starving. Lord, we got to save. God said, burn it up. Why, God? Because leftovers prophesy to you. Leftovers tell you you're going to be doing tomorrow the same thing you did today. God said, burn it up. Leave no leftovers. Because this time tomorrow, you will be in an entire new experience with a new appetite. God said, tonight when you eat, God said, eat with your coat on, eat with your belt around your waist. God said, eat with your shoes on, and for the leaders of the house, keep your staff in your hand. The staff in the hand, usually, the staff was, it, was a, it became a family heirloom. Actually, uh, the names of the family were carved into the staff many times. Uh, it was a point of accountability. God said, be ready to give an account for everybody under your leadership. God said, don't get the itis. Don't eat and get itis. No, 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 no. God said, tonight when you eat, keep your loins girt. Why? God said, because the quantum shift, it will happen so swiftly. You don't have time to get ready. You have to be ready. Now, I know many of you watched the movie. And in the movie, you saw Israel leave Egypt during the sunshine. Read the Bible. The Bible says that night, the scripture is so clear. The scripture keeps using the term that night, that night, at night, that night, at night. The Bible says that night, at night, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, come get your stuff, get your, as my grandma said, get your grip and get up out of here. The Bible says it was night. The scripture says they had to open up the market. The mall was closed. The scripture says Egypt opened up the market. Egypt opened up stores and said, hey, y'all go in there, get anything you want. Uh, you ain't got to pay for it. Just get up out of here. Just leave. We didn't dealt with frogs. We didn't dealt with lice. We didn't dealt with, with hail. We dealt with darkness. We didn't dealt with our cattle dying. Look, if this is what's going to take for y'all to get up out of here, the store is now open. Get your stuff. Israel, the Bible says Israel went in. Uh, the Bible uses the term borrow. But the borrow, the borrow that the scripture term uses there for borrow, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean give and I give back to you. Uh, the term borrow there means give me what's owed to me. Give me what's owed to me. I've been working for you 430 years. You ain't never gave me a dime. Give me what's owed to me. The Bible says Egypt gave Israel silver and gold. They opened up the tapestry stores and start giving them blue cloth, start giving them red scarlet cloth, start giving them white fine linen. Ah, my God, I love it. The Bible says Israel came out of Egypt that night. Read the Bible. The Bible says when they got to the Red Sea, the scripture says God sent an east wind. Those of you that are biblical students, uh, read about the four winds. Each one of them are distinctive. Each one of them have a different purpose. There's the reason for the east wind, a reason for the west wind, a reason for the north wind, and a reason for the south wind. 
my God, when I watch the news, when I watch ABC News and the meteorologist comes on, uh, I get excited when she starts telling me which way the winds are coming. Ah! Oh, because some of them bring a southerly flow, which brings a level of nourishment. Some of them push, some of them, uh, they push out, they push out, they push out disease. They come through to push out, they come with force. Read when the scripture, why God specifically sends certain winds. The Bible says that night he sent an east wind, and the Bible says he sent an east wind that blew all night. Israel came out of Egypt at night. Your deliverance, you don't wait to see the sunshine to start dancing. The date doesn't change when the sun comes up. By the time the sun comes up, it's been a new day for six to seven hours. Some of y'all waiting to see for the break in the day. Ooh, I can't wait. Ooh, ooh, Lord. Lord, I need to see a light at the end of the tunnel. That's called a train. You better learn. <laughs> the Bible says they came out at night. The scripture says when they got out, God then tells why. He told Pharaoh why they had to get out. He says, let them go that they might worship. You don't worship in Egypt. You don't even get his word in Egypt. He didn't give his law till you got delivered. He came to you and gave you covenant after you were delivered. He didn't make covenant with you when you were a slave. He set you free and gave you covenant. The Bible says when they came out, God says, let them go that they might go out into the wilderness and there they might worship church. The scripture says when they come out, when they get out, after they get out, the scripture says that now God starts giving order. He says, Moses, I want you to take an offering. He says, matter of fact, the offering that I want you to take, I want you to specifically ask for certain things. You mean God wants an offering and then he tells us what he wants us to give? God says, tell the people I want blue, scarlet, purple, gold, white, fine linen. God says, tell them I want blue, scarlet, gold, purple, white, fine linen, cloths. I want gold and silver. How could God ask slaves for gold and silver? Because he know what they got. He knows what he blessed you with. So when the Lord asks you for something, check out what he already gave you. God then says, all right, I want you to take each tribe and begin to place them around the tabernacle. Set order. When the people march, I want you to send Judah first. Now, many times as preachers, we always preach about Judah preach about Judah it is praise it is worship we've even said praise is a weapon uh, we send Judah first but we don't cover the end God says send Judah first but put Dan at the hinder part it sounds kind of crazy because Dan is the smallest tribe why would you put Dan at the back why would you put the smallest tribe at the back Dan has been a small tribe. They've been, they've been small all their existence. They are not only small in number, but they're a group of short people. The tribe of Dan was a short group of people, and they were also small in number. Why would you tell a few short people to stand at the back? Because they've been fighting all their lives. Short folk know how to fight. More importantly, biblically, the term Dan means judge. The term Dan means judgment. The term Dan means decision. Whenever you make a judgment, you're making a decision. Send praise first. But at the end, somebody got to make a decision. 
We can shout, dance, jump, speak in tongues. But at the end, somebody got to make some decisions. That's why in our services, we put praise and worship at the beginning. At the end, we have a thing called altar call. It's a call to discipleship. We didn't put praise and worship first. At the end, it's time to make a judgment call. Time to make a decision. Either for God you live or for God you die. Make a decision. Well, the scripture says that now. God says, take one of the tribes and they shall be unto me. It is the priesthood. God said they are a nation of kings and priests. That's what I'm making you. But God says, I want you to take the tribe and I want you to make them as sons of Levi. God says, now when you build the place where they shall work, it shall be called the tabernacle. We know it as the outer court, the inner court, and holy of holies. We know it as the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. God says, right outside, build a bowl. Build a bowl made out of brass. God said, the bowl will be made out of brass, and then the foot. Um, uh, some of the youngsters might not understand it, but uh, there's a group of you that you're old enough to remember uh, um, 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 the, the tub that had the feet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh. God says, when you make this bowl made out of brass, make the foot of it brass as well. God says, shine the brass up so that if anybody walks up on it, they see their reflection. Why do I walk up to brass and see my reflection? What's the purpose, God? It causes you to make a decision. The New Testament will teach us this way. Nobody walks, nobody looks into a mirror and sees something wrong and walks away and not correct what's wrong. When you're walking up to the brazen lava and the brazen altar, the altar was there ah, for you to be remorseful, to be repented. It was there for you to bring sacrifice based on your sin. But it was the brazen lava where you determined, I need to wash. Do me a favor. Put the pen down. Put the paper down. Ah, ah, put the baby down. Everybody just take a moment and just wash your hands. Uh-uh. I wouldn't want some of y'all to do surgery on me at all. I want you to wash like you're about to do surgery. Clean your nails. Get up under there. God said, Moses, tell Aaron and his sons that before they can either serve the people or do service unto me, they have to wash. There shall be no contamination. The hands represent the heart. Do you not understand that when Israel, oh, when they built the tabernacle, there was a guy. There was a guy who stood outside uh, the tabernacle and even the temple. Um, it, uh, only certain people, only those that were in covenant, the males that were in covenant were allowed into the temple. And what they would do, there was a guy that stood at the door. We've translated it years later and called them the ushers. Uh, 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 but one of their responsibilities, the person who stood at the door, they had to make sure that everybody that went in the temple was qualified. How do you make sure that they were qualified? They weren't reading papers. There was no paper that said, uh, there was no badge that said all access badge. No, no, no. The Bible says only those that were in covenant. Who were those in covenant? The scripture says when God told Abraham on the eighth day of every male Hebrew, cut him into covenant, it will be a, it will be a sign and a token of this covenant between you and generations to come. The guy that stood at the door. For him to check to see if you were in covenant, he had to lift up your robe to see if you were in covenant. And if he did not see circumcision, you were not allowed in. Don't care what your name was, who your grandmama was, what you look like. Paul the apostle would talk about this same experience. And he would say, isn't it phenomenal? Look at all of us sitting here in the backgrounds that we come from. Isn't it amazing? 
that not only were we not Jewish, oh, the Bible says we had no hope, we had no covenant, we, had, we were aliens and strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. We had no hope in this world and no God on our side. But look where we sit tonight. We're sitting in heavenly places. And when we walked in the door, nobody was standing at the door trying to check up under our robe. God said, I still require circumcision, but I'm not looking for circumcision in the flesh. When you walked in here, I'm looking for circumcision of the heart. But God says, I still require you to be washed. I still require clean hands and a pure heart. I wonder tonight, with the shoes that you have on, that you have worn into the house of worship, where else have those shoes been? Look down at your feet and think about it. Where did I wear these shoes? Did these shoes go to somebody's house who I shouldn't have been at? Ooh, are them church shoes or are them club shoes? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, are them some thieving shoes? Ooh. Are them renegade shoes? Have you been running from something in them shoes? Now you understand when God says, Moses, step out your shoes. You're on holy ground. There should be nothing between you and the presence of the Lord. Your feet and steps are now ordered by him. Oh, my, my God. God says, you have now been sanctified to worship. You've been sanctified to serve. You've been cleansed to not only do service unto him, but to serve one another. I don't eat at everybody's house. I don't care how much they say you're the best cook in town. I go in restaurant reading grades. I need to see how, what, what did the health department grade you at? Mm. Mm. Don't tell me what the flavor is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Cockroaches got flavor. Mm -mm. Saints of God, God said, I brought you out that you might come into the wilderness to worship. But then I separated you unto myself to do service unto me and to serve one another. It's called chosen. It's called peculiar. I'm fascinated that everybody celebrates uniqueness and difference as long as it has nothing to do with church. People have no problem with you being you until church folks start being church folk. When church folks start being church folk, they say, you so churchy. Why you got a problem with me being churchy when I'm being who I am? The thug, he's thuggish. The world, worldly. The church should be churchy. But they'd rather define what churchy is and make you wear the label. But if you make them wear a label, they say, don't judge me. Folk that don't go to church want to tell, all church folk are alike. 
You don't even go to church. You only know five folk. The Hebrew writer writes and says, God says, sanctify your hands. Wash your feet. He would later tell them, anoint your ear your hand, anoint your tongue. God says, Moses, tell them if they try to do service either unto me or to serve one another and they have not been washed, they shall die. This place should never become common. I'm getting concerned that we're taking sacred things and we're bringing them down to a level of commonality. Keep sacred things sacred. It is not only for your benefit, but it's for the benefit of those you serve. I don't know how it was in your house, so I can't speak for your house, but I wish I would have called my mama by her first name. She quickly told me, I'm your mom. I'm not one of your friends on the street. There was a level of regard and respect. Ah, my daddy was shorter than me. I could have took him. But there was a level of respect. Old man spoke, yes, sir. Even when I didn't agree, yes, sir. I'm telling you that the Lord has placed you in a position that if your hands aren't clean, not only does it affect your service to Him. Your hands being clean places you in a position, oh God, not only to receive and give to him, but it puts you in a position to be a conduit. The Bible says it this way, how dare you see the need of your brother and sister and you look at them and say, mm, I know you're hungry. May the Lord feel your belly right now. No, no, no. You're the conduit. But only with clean hands. Why? Because the shift that God is taking you, he's actually pushing you forward to a place you used to be. What is the purpose of the church? What was the reason for Christ? Is to get us back what we lost in Adam. We, God says, now, Moses, tell Aaron, these things must be done properly. Why? Moses, when you build the tabernacle, build it according to specifications. Why, Moses? When you build the tabernacle, build it according to the pattern. Why? Because what you're building on earth is a replica of what is already in glory. And you don't have the right to deviate from the design because it is not your copyright. You don't get to choose. Come on, general contractors. Once the spec book has been complete, you don't get to go back and deviate. Come on, blueprint designers. Come on, architects. You understand that once a plan has been laid out, what is on paper should look 
just like what shall be in reality. The priesthood and the design that God planned through Israel was to be a replica. The Bible didn't say that the Old Testament was shadows. The Bible says the Old Testament having shadows. It had shadows of good things to come. Lord, have mercy. There's a thing. I want everybody to repeat after me. Say feeps. F-E-E-P-S. Say feeps. Feeps stands for figures, examples, Examples, patterns, and shadows. Figures, examples, examples, patterns, and shadows. That was the Old Testament. Figures, examples, examples, patterns, and shadows. Church of the living God. Each one of those figures had to remain proper to specification. Why? Because what they represented is what Christ would be. And who Christ is, is who you are. And your life is here with Christ in God. You don't get to change the pattern because you don't like the color. It ain't your house. You don't get to reroute where the doorway is. You ain't the door. Jesus says, I am the door. You don't get to change. I remember when uh, I was reading the book of Ephesians and Paul writes as the master builder. Paul writes and he starts talking as though everybody in Ephesus understands architectural terms. He starts using terms like everybody went to architectural school. He starts talking about foundation. He starts talking about joint. He starts talking about habitation. He starts talking about house. He starts talking about cornerstone. He starts talking about building. He starts talking about wall. He starts talking about door. Oh, church of the living God. Oh, I asked one of my architectural friends who works at the university. I said, oh, what's the power of the cornerstone? I thought the cornerstone, that little corner in the wall, I thought that was the strength of the whole wall. He said, eh. <laughs> he made me feel like I was on Family Feud with a bad answer. Eh. <laughs> I said, well, what's the strength of the cornerstone? <laughs> he said, the cornerstone is not the strength of the wall. <laughs> he said, technically, the strength of the wall is the foundation. That's why you put the foundation first and then you add the frame to the foundation. You don't put doors on a foundation. You put doors on frames because frames are held by the foundation. Oh, I said, well, what's the strength of the cornerstone? He said, the cornerstone is the place from which everything gets measured. <laughs> he said, if your cornerstone is off, every measurement in the building will be off. <laughs> That's why ha, when you read the scripture, the Bible calls Jesus Christ himself the chief cornerstone. Everything we measure, we measure by Jesus. Ha, he is lovely. He is holy. He is righteous. I don't measure by you. You don't measure by me. We all go by the chief cornerstone. So if we ain't measuring by you, how do you get to change the rules? How do you get to say what's old school, new school? How do you get to say, whoa, what God ain't doing no more? How do you get to say, who told you we could make an adjustment? Where did you get that from? Paul writes to the church of Galatia. He says, who bewitched you? How dare you start believing another gospel which ain't even a gospel? How dare you turn uh, to the beggarly elements of the world? Don't you realize that the beggarly elements of the world could not keep you? That's why you came over out of the world into the way of God. Now, how are you going to get out of the world into God and then think you're going to bring the world in God and then the world still going to work? The world didn't work in the world. It ain't going to work in God either. Church of the living God priesthood was established and the pattern was they were sanctified to serve. The order was that they did service unto the Lord but they served each other. And now you are the fulfillment of the pattern in Christ. For he has now made you a nation of kings and priests. 
the mandate has not changed. You must be sanctified to serve. I had a gentleman tell me, eh, baptism didn't show up to the New Testament. I said, you unlearned soul. When you search the scripture, the Old Testament calls it divers washings. The washings and the submergings of the Old Testament are what the New Testament calls it, baptism. God has always been a God of washing. Every time you come to church, he's washing you by the water of the word. Every time you hear his word, he's washing you. The pattern of the Old Testament said you had to be cut in the flesh for circumcision. The New Testament shows us the truth that it is still required of circumcision, but it's not the circumcision of the flesh. Now he requires the circumcision not made with hands. It's the circumcision of the spirit by the word. But the order is still the same. When you came out of Egypt, the first place they went is to the water. You're going to come out of Egypt. You're going into worship. I got to wash Egypt off of you. They all had to be led by the same cloud, which was a type. It was a shadow of the Holy Spirit. They all drank from the same rock, which was the spiritual rock. They all ate the same manna, which was the word of God that came down from heaven. Church of the living God, I know you're 21st century. I know we don't live in first century, but yet the order is still the same. You must be sanctified to serve. somebody in the eye and say, get sanctified. Now, it depends on what your, uh, what your history and what your culture was. For some people, that meant put on all white. Depends on what your culture was. Depends on what your background was. Ooh, sanctified. Ooh, you could see them coming a mile away. Say, ooh, she's sanctified. She's sanctified. She's sanctified. Your mama said, watch your words. Watch your words. That's a sanctified lady right there. I'm asking you, what position are you in to serve? What position are you in to do service unto the Lord or to serve each other? Are you contaminated? They tell me one sneeze can fill a room. <laughs> I get annoyed when I'm around people they just Achoo! and then they get mad at me because I said oh. those were your germs not mine and even though I don't know you now you've put me in a position that I take some of you with me If germs could do it, how about the name of Jesus? Would you do me a favor and fill his name with this room? Jesus. 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 Wash your hands one more time. Wash your hands one more time. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty king and he's master of everything 
And his name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Check your hands. When I was asking you to wash your hands, what I was really saying is repent. Now wash your hands one more time with understanding. Repent. That word is not just for the unregenerate. That word is from generations to revelations. Repent. Turn. Change. Now take those same hands. Clean hands. And lift them up to the Lord. He's taken you back to what you were before you fell. The shift is so great, it's a quantum shift. You were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. He's taken you back to what we lost in Adam. For you it's your future, but technically it's your past. Ooh, some people like to tell you your past was horrible. Tell them you don't know who I am. I'm going forward back to where I belong. We're literally going back to where we were in the garden. When he gets through this whole planet will be back like the garden was. When he gets through, sorry to disappoint some of y'all, but ain't gonna be no church in glory. Sorry. The church was to get you back to where you once were. When we get to glory, we're already there. Ooh, now do me another favor with those clean hands. Take one person by both of their hands. Take one person by both of their hands. It's your choice. You can stand or sit. Do me a favor. Look at their hands. Look at their hands. Their hands tell a story. Some people you can tell where, where they work by their hands. Some people you could tell their struggle and their fight by their hands. Some people you can tell their personality by their hands. And now you're holding their hands. The hand that you hold, they cry even if they don't show it. The hand you hold, they have feelings, even if they say, sticks and stones break my bones, but words don't hurt. The hand you hold, they say they can do it by themselves, but they're appreciative of somebody holding their hand right now. You raise those hands to the Lord, and now you're taking those same hands, and you're serving your brother and sister. 
you're about to pray for them. One of the things I want you to pray tonight, I want you to pray that God, God would give them grace to endure. That he would give them grace to endure. Another thing you're going to pray tonight is that they would be strengthened with might in their inner man. You're going to pray that they would be strengthened with might in their inner man. And then you're going to pray for them that God would grant them boldness to make some tough decisions. For most of us, we know what to do. We just need boldness to do it. We know what God wants from us. We know the thing that will make our lives move in a different direction, but it takes boldness to do it. The hands you're holding, you're about to pray three things for them. One, you're praying for grace to endure. You're going to pray that they would be strengthened with might in their inner man. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. And thirdly, you're going to pray for boldness to make tough decisions. Start praying for them right now. Start praying for them right now. Start praying for them right now. Grace to endure. Their test, it's a timed test. They must go the length of time in this test. They cannot come out premature. They must go the length of time in this test. It's not just about coming out. It's about what God is developing in them to go to. If they come out too soon, it'll be half-baked. So pray for grace to endure. Pray for grace to endure. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Fight the good fight. Come on, don't you shortchange them. Give them a sincere prayer. Give them a real prayer. Effectual, fervent prayer. Now pray that they would be strengthened with might in their inner man. Pray that they would be strengthened with might in their inner man. Speak to their spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. Boldness in the things of God. Boldness in the gifts of the Spirit. Boldness against the adversary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we give you great thanks. As a nation of priests, we intercede for our sisters and brothers. As a nation of priests, we do service as unto the Lord, but we also serve one another. The gifts that you've given us, we edify each other. We build each other up. 
And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Release those hands and give God a thunderous hand clap. Oh, somebody give the Lord great praise. Hallelujah. 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 Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. I pray tonight that through the pattern of the scriptures you'll see that God is consistent. He required holiness in the Old Testament. He requires holiness in the New Testament. He required sanctification in the Old Testament. He requires sanctification in the new. He chose a people to be a priesthood unto himself in the old. And the priests are still being a priesthood today. God even told Aaron that it shall be a memorial forever. Forever. The apostle writes to us and says, now you are a nation. Your words have power, and you have the ability to stand in the gap. You are a nation of kings and priests. Well, the word of a king is, there is power. A priest stands in the gap. He has to do service before the Lord but he serves God's people but he cannot do service unto the Lord or service unto the people of God with unclean hands tell three people I've been sanctified to serve I've been sanctified to serve I've been sanctified to serve Tonight, I would hope and pray that tomorrow, whatever your agenda is, be conscious of your hands. Tonight, when you leave church, I want you to make a mental note just to be cautious of what you touch. When you pick up your phone and start scrolling, be, ooh, 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 ooh. when you pick up the remote, come on you Hulu users, come on. Come on you Fire Stick users, come on. Careful where you're rolling. Whoever you're going to talk to tonight, whether you text them or email them, whether you get on Glide, whether you FaceTime, when they go to talking crazy, say, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I'm sanctified to serve. Mm-mm. 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 When I was young in ministry and I lived at home, me and my siblings, we were all living in my parents' house. I started preaching when I was a teenager. I would have so much anxiety about ministry that I would always get into an argument with my sisters. Every time I had to preach, every time I had to minister, there was always this confrontation. I was full of anxiety. I wanted to make sure I studied right, but they would always do stuff to irritate me. I got to argue with my sister and by the time we got to church she was standing over in the corner she's about this tall 
I had gone into the office, to the minister's office, and I came out the office, and I was walking around church, and I was looking for my sister. I found her. She was standing. I walked over to her, and I said, what are you doing over here? She said, mm -hmm, I'm waiting on you. She said, I know you can't minister until you apologize. She said, you can't preach with that on you. She was absolutely right. You can't minister. You can't pray. You can't read scripture. You can't sing. And you're not sanctified. According to scripture, even couples. If you hold in grudges, it hinders your prayers. You wonder why you've been waiting on God to do something? Check your heart. Grudges hinder prayers. When I go to the hospital to pray for sick, I go one day, especially if I don't know them, I go one day and I ask them, take today and forgive. I'm coming back tomorrow to pray for healing. But today, take today to forgive. That when we lay hands on you, healing comes. But you got to flush that stuff out your heart. Get your heart right. Tell one more person, child, I'm sanctified to serve. The Bible says it this way, walk circumspectly. That word circumspectly is from the same word we get circumference. It's from the same word we get circumcision. Take the cut. Come on, car players, you understand. We can't play the game till you cut the deck. But the challenge is you have to watch people who cut the deck. Because you can get cut in or cut out. When God tells you that he wants you to be circumcised. He's not cutting you out. He's cutting you in. Today, I pray that God has said something that causes you to be more conscious about your purpose in the earth. Your purpose in the earth is to do service as unto him. But I'm also to serve one another. As a member of the body of Christ, he's given you spiritual gift. And the gift does not edify you. It edifies the body. Edifies the body. We edify one another. You build up yourself praying in the Holy Ghost. But you edify through your gift one another. Today, let's become more conscious. I'm saying... I can't say everything I'm sanctified to serve I can't go everywhere I'm sanctified to serve I don't run with everybody because I'm sanctified to serve I, it's not that I put myself in a position that I think I'm better than them to look down upon them but I know my responsibility sanctified to serve clean hands pure heart to the praise team and the choir thank you when you start ministering about hands and feet us yes. call of God on our lives today I want to be a blessing in this house and I need you to help me do it 
I want everybody that's capable of doing it financially to join me. Pastor, do we have the ability to give electronically? Yes. Uh, by debit or credit, we can do that. I want everybody that's capable of doing it a simple $50. Everybody that's capable of doing it, get a Pentecostal gift. That term 50 means Pentecost. The term Pentecost means 50. Everybody that's capable of doing it, get a $50 gift. I want you to prepare to give unto the Lord. We're all going to do, we're giving. Yes, sir, I hear you. All I have is his today. Now, it might be that some of you didn't get a chance to stop by the ATM and get some money out. We thought about you. That same card you've been swiping for gas and for groceries, swipe for Jesus tonight. Everybody gets something. Now, according to the scripture, a man can only give as God has prospered him. According to the scripture, you ought to purpose in your heart to give. I want to be a blessing to the church and to this auxiliary and this prayer extravaganza and I implore your help. By law, we have to give you the opportunity to have your gifts recorded. So if anybody desires an envelope to have their gift recorded, if you hold your hands up, I see the ushers now, they're ready. If you hold your hands up,